It's taken longer than I expected, but we finally have some decent tools to manage Tesla's dash cam and sentry mode videos without needing a computer. I imagine these features will eventually make it to the cars themselves, or maybe Tesla's official app, but this is the best of what we have right now. So first off, let's just go over what Sentry Mode and Tesla Cam even are. And if you already know, you can go to this time to skip to the hardware I'm using and this time to skip to the software. So Tesla Cam is the dash cam feature that records continuously while you're driving and Sentry Mode records if it senses motion around the car when you're parked. To enable either, you need to connect a specially formatted storage drive to either of most Tesla's front USB ports to enable recording from the front camera and two of the side cameras. I say most because S's and X's built before August 2017 don't have all of the needed hardware, but all Model 3's do. While you're driving, the car will continuously record and overwrite a one hour loop of video. If something happens when you're driving that you don't want to get overridden, you can tap the icon to save a 10 minute clip. Each minute of video is three files at about 30 megabytes. So that hour loop of dash cam footage needs at least 1.8 gigabytes of space, but you're going to need more than that since every saved clip also needs an additional 300 megabytes. When you enable it, Sentry Mode continuously watches around the car and saves up to 10 minute clips that also don't get overwritten. As of Tesla's firmware version 2019.16.2, you can enable it several ways. You can use voice control, you can tap the icon at the top of the screen, or use the app to manually enable it, or you can go into the car's settings menu to set it to automatically enable everywhere or everywhere except for home, work, or favorite locations. As for how much storage you need, 32 gigabytes can store around 17 hours of footage, or 128 gigabytes can store around 70 hours. So for example, the hour dash cam loop is about 1.8 gigabytes, and if Sentry Mode records 10 clips each day, that's another 3 gigabytes each day. So you could go 10 days before you had to clear a 32 gigabyte card or 42 days with a 128 gigabyte card. Personally, I use a Samsung Pro Endurance 128 gigabyte card as my primary and a Transcend 32 gigabyte as my backup. You can use any old flash drive or solid state drive, but most of them are not optimized for dash cam duty and their warranties specifically exclude dash cam use. And yes, that includes even SanDisk flash drives. The high endurance micro SD cards use a different type of memory that's optimized for constant writing. Samsung has the best rating in the business right now at 43,800 hours of recording for the 128 gigabyte card. Transcend is the next highest at 24,000 hours and SanDisk rates theirs at 10,000 hours for 64 gigabytes, since they don't have a 128 gigabyte option right now. To connect to the car, I've been using this four-way card reader that can connect directly to the car with USB-A and then go straight into my phone with USB-C and no other adapters needed. It also has lightning and micro USB connectors as well. You don't need an app to view the files on Android, but you do for Apple. It uses an app for iOS called iUSB Pro, which isn't a great experience right now, and hopefully there's better to come. My backup drive is in this Rocketech adapter, and I use this USB on the go OTG adapter to connect it to my phone. And this will work for pretty much anything that is USB. So solid state drives or flash drives. As for other storage options, a solid state drive made for computer duty will work well. It'll last a long time and you can get them in terabyte sizes for even more hours of storage. But I wanted something more compact and 70 hours is enough for my needs. The SanDisk iExpand drive is popular for iOS, but it doesn't have high endurance memory. 
The SanDisk Connect has Wi-Fi, which sounds great in theory, but it doesn't connect to your home Wi-Fi to upload your video files like you're probably expecting. Instead, you have to unplug it from the car so you can connect it to your phone directly with Wi-Fi using their app. And at that point, I just assume connect it wired. It doesn't add any features other than being wireless, and again, it doesn't have high endurance memory. The SanDisk options really do have the best app right now for iOS. So while they may not be the best for durability, they are probably the best option for convenience right now. And realistically, I mean, what are the chances of you being in an accident or you having a century event and having that drive fail at that time? They're probably pretty low, but that is the whole purpose of this. So to me, I would lean more towards the high endurance memory over the convenience, even if that means as an Apple user, you have to use a laptop right now. But hopefully there are some options coming in the future. So for software, ideally you want to be able to review the video from all three cameras at the same time, scrub through it, and then delete it. Even better is to be able to format the card in FAT32 and create the Tesla Cam folder with no computer needed. Unfortunately for Apple users, the software experience just isn't there right now. You can't format cards, you can only watch one video at a time, and the software is pretty clunky. I've been holding off on this video, hoping for that to catch up, but it just hasn't yet. But there is hope. There are some things in the works, including from the developer of the app I'm using for Android. So stay tuned for a future video. For Android though, things have gotten pretty good. I can take an unformatted card, attach it to the phone here. I can format it. And then I can use the Files app. To create the Tesla Cam folder. And now I can eject it. And go straight into the car. And I get the icon, tap it, and we're recording. So all from mobile. Once I have some footage, I hold the icon, and then you give it a second to pause. So now that it's turned gray, can remove it and connect to the phone. There are currently two apps available in the Google Play Store to review the footage. Tesla Cam slash Century Reviewer has more and better reviews and is getting more updates, so it's probably the best bet for now. The developer is active on Tesla Motors Club forums and has been adding requested features to his to-do list, including an iOS version. So in the app, you can select your drive and then choose between recent events, which is showing 60 clips, that's the 60 minute loop of dash cam videos, and then century mode or manually saved events. As you're looking through these clips, you may find some that say clip is missing or corrupt. And that's, as best as I can tell, a Tesla problem, not an app problem, because you see the same thing on the computer when you try to review the clips. So as you're reviewing clips, you can come in here, you can select different times along each minute, you can choose, you can jump ahead one minute, so those are different files that you're going to. You have playback speeds here, half speed, normal speed, two times speed, and premium features that have just recently been added, you can tap on a video to zoom in, or you can share here, left, front, right, what time to what time, share files, and you have choices of Google Drive or other apps. So pretty sweet. With up to 70 hours of footage on a 128 gigabyte card, 
If there's nothing in particular you want to save, you may just want to reformat and recreate that Tesla cam folder. So you can come in here, storage settings and format. Hopefully formatting will be added directly to this app in the future. And it would be really awesome if you just had a button that was like prepare drive. So that would do the format and create the Tesla cam folder for you. So consider buying the premium features of this app or maybe even just buy the developer some coffee and we can get some of those features sooner. So that's it. I'll put links in the description for all the different things that I talked about. Hopefully there will be another video coming in the near future for Apple and thanks for watching.